the medical or pharmacist advice when we're going to prescribe the those medications in low GMR patients. So recommend another recommendation is that not use the herbal medicines in people who have a CTE. It's a strong evidence rating one. So recommended that metformin should be uh, continue can continue in people who have GFR more than 45 mL and about 1.73 meters squared. But the point that GFR will coming down in between 30 to 45, we should be reviewed again. And then if the GFR is more and more down, less than 30, we have to discontinue and then um, modify the drugs. So for people who have a, a low GFR, uh, in the textbook of the medicine, they said that the sick day cards, patients have to keep that sick day card. That includes when information includes when you are unwell with the vomiting, diarrhea, or fever, stop taking the following medication, in which ACEI, ERB, NSEI, diuretics, and performing, and then you can start the those drug when you well again after 24 to 48 hours of eating and drinking normally. That cut is a very useful for uh, who have a CKD. So another, uh, uh, we forgot it, the uh, important is uh, using the radio contrast agents. Now many interventions coming and using the uh, radio contrast agents. So quite frequently we see the patient become a uh, renal impairment worsen after having a dose intervention. So radio contrast agents is another important nephrotoxic agent. So we have to balance, uh, uh, by using those, we have to balance, we, we can have a uh, acute impairment of the kidney function. And then uh, if the therapeutic and diagnostic implications are more than the metrics, uh, we cannot apply by using those, but we have to be careful. And then when the GFI is less than 60, uh, using those radio contrast agents is a uh, uh, due precaution for using those agents. So in which what sort of radio contrast agents we can use and not use. So recommendation is avoidance of the high or smaller agents. There's a recommendation uh, evidence one be and use of the lowest possible radio contrast tools. And the withdrawal that those potentially the production is before and after use of the those procedure. And then give adequate hydration with the saline before, during, and after the procedure. And the measurement of the, their GFR 48 to 96 hours after the procedure again. There's a caution, everybody has to be aware of that. And then another factor that delay the progression is the diet, salt, and protein intake. Uh, the lowering of the salt intake is very important in the CKD because uh, every day our salt consumption in the uh, Eastern country, Asian countries and Western countries is much, much more than the recommended dose. According to the WHO uh, recommendation, the salt intake is less than 2 gram per day of sodium. That means uh, 1 teaspoon of the salt is a 2 gram per day. If sodium chloride is, a, uh, is about 5 gram, so sodium is a 2 gram. So every day we are eating a lot of sodium, so we have to be careful about reducing and cutting down of our salt intake. And then another one is a protein intake. Uh, protein intake is important factors in uh, delaying the progression. If the protein intake is very high, uh, high catabolism and then fattening may be rising rapidly. So lowering the protein intake to 0.8 grams per kg per day does for the diabetes. If, who diabetes or without diabetes and the GFR less than 30 mL per minute in which reduce the protein intake to 0.8. So that protein intake is not equivalent to the weight of the meat. So if every meat they included the protein, fiber, vitamins, and the water. So the uh, protein uh, meat weight is not equivalent to protein intake. We have to be careful about that. And then suggest avoid using the high protein intake in adult with CKD. 
because it can increase the risk of progression. So the final, the final points to delay the progression, uh, although the, that's uh, the last point, that not the least. The important physical activity and the lifestyle. So recommendation for people who have a CKD undertake the physical activity compatible with their cardiovascular health and their tolerance at least 30 minutes five times per week. So to achieve that they are healthy with BMI in between 20 to 25. And then another important stop smoking. I would like to suggest about the, uh, when the specialist referral is needed. So we have to report the uh, nephrology when you, your kidney becomes thin. So refer to specialists. So recommendation of the specialist referral in following condition of the CKD patient who has a BKI or EBRA sustained fall in their GFR. And then someone with a GFR less than 30 and then persistent uh, significant albuminuria and the rapid progression of the CKD stages and the active urinary sediments in the urine, obviously more than 20 per high power of food. And the CKD and the data of hypertension is referring to the four or more of the antihypertensive agents. In renal patients, antihypertensive agents, they need the many antihypertensive agents and the sky high they are dosage. Uh, in that sort of cases we need to be careful to transfer the uh, refer the patient to specialist and the persistent abnormality of the serum protein and the recurrent extensive uh nephrolithiasis and then someone who have the hereditary kidney disease. So after the the progression and the treat the problem the CKD complication, we have to conclude with the summary. In the in conclusion, co management with the uh, general practitioner, nephrologist, and the pinologist, and the various uh, comorbidity specialty, patient safety, and timely refer to the nephrologist and important. So, who should be involved in the patient safety approach to the CKD? And uh, in the primary care practitioner, they can uh, treat the CKD stage 1, 2, and the early stage of the CKD stage 3. In later part of the stage 3, stage 4 and 5, they need the nephrologist consultation because they have to prepare for the renal replacement therapy. So this is a uh, uh, benefit to be the good health for the kidney. So we give the health education to uh, uh, our public with the uh, uh, Encourage to drink uh, plenty of water and the reduce the salt intake and then take the medicine without uh, prescription by the doctors and then um, uh, drink alcohol in sensible limit, don't drink too much and stop smoking and then reduce uh, uh, food who contain uh, a lot of soda and then uh, keep in the balanced diet and uh, uh, regular physical activities. So, in summary, the incidence of the CKD is increasing worldwide. So, early diagnosis and timely intervention is essential to treat the progression of the CKD. Although the CKD patients, the, the important cause of mortality and morbidity is CBD. Therefore, uh, we have to be careful about the CBD. CBD risk factor. In delay the progression, the anemia, correction of the anemia, blood pressure control, hyperuricemia, and there are many factors that, uh, we can give our uh, intervention. By those intervention, we can delay the progression. Uh, although the anemia is a common comorbidity in the uh, CKD patients, there are many multifactorial causes. That's why EBO is uh, not only drugs to correct the anemia in CKD patients. We have to look for the other causes if the uh, type of anemia is uh, not a normal chronic normocytic anemia. Although the EBO is a mainstay of treatment in, by correcting the normal chronic normocytic anemia in CKD patients, but there are many harmful effects 
when we use the large tools, high targeted hemoglobin level, and then we get fees sometimes with the EBU hyporesponsive meds and pure resident euphasia by using the uh, type, depending on the type of EBU we are used. So in future, we can expect to have our EBU mimetic, HIF stabilizer, and EBU gene therapy. And then uh, the equally important is uh, treating the uh, complication of the CKD patients. Because the CKD is not only one cis entity, the cis entity, they have so many comorbid conditions. So thank you for um, the attention, and uh, I wish all of you happy in the coming in my new year, 2019. <laughs>